Bonjour Jenny Engineers, welcome to my Problem a Day series. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to identify the zero force members on a giving truss. Now, I got a very similar question on my FE exam and that is why I want to share it with you guys. If you're here for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. So how do you identify these zero force members on the truss? So when I took statics and strict of materials at first, I struggled a little bit understanding it. But then I, when I got into structural analysis, my professor explained it in the most simplistic way. And since then, I was able to always identify the zero force members on the truss. And that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. Now, another thing, this question is perfect for an FE exam for midterm or final. It is quick question and it also tests your uh, understanding of the material so in here we're going to go over the two concepts behind it and then we're going to go over these uh, simple examples now on the next video we're going to actually identify all the zero force members on a given truss right, so concept number one we have two non-collinear members connected to a joint that has no external loads or reactions applied to it now, note that these two examples apply to concept one and these two apply to concept two. Now, let me explain this a little bit. So, collinear just means that the force that's acting are on the same line of action. But non-collinear, it just means they're not on the same line of action. So, this is what it means. So, if you have a force, let's look at example A, right? Now, A and B, this is A and B. This is B and this is C, right? Now, if we extend AB, if we extend AB and we extend AC, they don't have the same line of action, right? If we look at example C, if you have, we have AC going this way and we have AB going this way, they have the same line of action. They're on the same plane. So that this is what this means. Okay, so... I hope you guys understand this because it's very important. This is the whole, that's the key of this whole uh, concept. So let's go back to example A. So these two are not on the same line of action. So that means both of these members are going to be zero. Now, same things goes with example B. So if we extend BA and we extend AC, they're not on the same line of action. And so the force AB and force AC are both going to be zero. Now, if we look at concept number two, we have three members, right? And two of them are collinear, like here and this one. They're on the same line of action and they're connected to the joint. Now, all three members have to be connected to the joint and they have no external load or reactions, right? So the force member that is not collinear, it's going to be zero. So for if we look at C, these members are collinear, right? Because they act on the same line of action. Now, if AD, it's going to be zero because AD is not, is not acting on the same line as AB and AC. And that's why AD is going to be zero. So remember this, the member that is not collinear is the member that's zero. So this is very important. Now, C, D is the same thing. We have these are on the same line, right? A, D, it's not. So A, D is going to be zero because that's the non-collinear member. Okay, guys, so on the next video, we're going to actually identify all the zero force members on a giving truss. So make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when I release the video. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. A la prochaine. Oh yeah, everybody now.